you're building your acoustic instrument from scratch, you'll need some way to apply heat to the sides so we can bend them into the shape that we want. Whether you're using some kind of a heating iron or a press with um, heated blankets uh, or some combination of those things, there are several ways you can do it. You'll, you'll need that heat source to get the wood into the shape that we want. I've been using this heating iron and it's worked very well for me. And I'm going to show you how I put this together. So let's take this bad boy apart and look inside, shall we? Okay, I haven't completely disassembled this, but I wanted to take it apart enough so that I could show you how the parts fit together. This is actually a heating element that was used for smoker, I believe, for um, heating up hickory ch chips. Uh, and it's two inches wide and seven inches long, which works well for the instruments that I've been building. So what I did was, um, it's on a grounded plug. So I just threaded it through this plate, hooked to a uh, conduit connector, so I could attach it to the front. And uh, a couple other things that I have seen people use are to take a metal tube and use a cartridge heater and put a cartridge heater in here to heat it up. I've also seen people use uh, mount a light bulb on something like this and and then put the metal shield over that to create the heat source. So, you know, if you want to get creative, I think there are several options that you can use to do this. The other important thing is to be able to control the temperature of the heating element. You want it to be warm enough so that the wood steams and gets softer, but you don't want it too warm so that it scorches the wood. And most woods are going to bend really well between 350 and 400 degrees. So uh, I, I took the cord and I split it so I could mount it onto this rheostat. And you can see it, it's got the grounded plug, so it's grounded. And then I uh, hooked the wires together so that I can use this to regulate the current and therefore the temperature in the heating unit. So we've got a way to regulate the temperature, but then you also need a way to measure the temperature. So I use this surface thermometer and check it on the heating element. Uh, you may have to wait up to half hour, 45 minutes for this to get warm enough to use. So you might want to keep that in mind. If you looked at these heating elements at all on the internet, you notice that some builders uh, will mount the heating element vertically. Uh, for me, it's easier if it's down closer to the table and I, I can work horizontally with, with the wood. So that's how I chose to do this one. I, you, I could switch it if I wanted to. This is uh, eight inches tall, eight and a half inches wide, and seven and a half inches deep. I also left a little extra on the bottom part of this here so I could clamp it to the edge of my work table. That way you don't have to worry about it sliding on you when you're trying to bend the wood. So I hope this gave you some ideas on making your own heating iron or bending iron. Um, so I'll be coming up shortly with my build of my drum sander. So if this is something that's interesting to you, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications of our next videos.